Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Rasp Tendo Pi 3 case. So this thing is pretty neat. We're going to take a look at her, put her together, and do a tutorial on how to install the script for the functional power on and off and reset button. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of the box. I was waiting for this to, to be released on Amazon. So I did spend my own money to purchase this. If you do want to grab one of these through Amazon, link will be in the description. They're typically about $25 shipped, so I don't think that's too bad, but we got to take a look at her first to really see if it's worth it. So as you see here, the buttons, power and reset, they're, you know, you push them in, kind of clicky, nice little clicky sound. Not like the typical Super Nintendo power switch, but that's okay. Taking a look at on the inside of the case is where all of our cords and our, everything that we're going to need to install the system and get everything wired up. No soldering required. There is an option if you want a hardware reset to solder some pins. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go through the different options that they have. They have two options. We're going to do the solderless option. So she does come with a nice little heat sink and then these little tabs are for the feet we'll take a closer look at that later and then here is the pins that we would solder if we're going to use that option but in this video we are not going to be doing any soldering with this case then we do have a handful of screws and then our nice little manual the manual is very well written it, seven easy steps just like it says, and really everything is easy. If you go step by step in this book, you will have no issue putting this together and having everything function. Like I said, you don't have to do the step one unless you really want to. I am not gonna do it at this moment. But we do have our pie here, so we're gonna go ahead and install everything. First off, you're gonna wanna get these leads out of here, the GPIO connectors. And then just go ahead and plug in the USBs to how they fit. I think I plugged these in incorrectly at first and then I swapped them. The long one should have been on the bottom for it to fit easier in there. So I did swap it in a second here. You can either just take out you know, the USBs from the ports that they're connected to or just leave them in. But they easily you know, pop in and out. So however you got to do it. I tried leaving them in the case and then plugged them in, put it back in the case. It's, it's kind of a tight fit getting the Pi in there with these cords attached, the, the USBs attached. It's very tight, but once you get the Pi in there, everything just kind of clicks into place. It Everything lines up the HDMI, the 3.5 millimeter jack, and the power supply. They all just kind of press fit in, and then you are going to have to mount this Pi to the case with a couple screws. And the system does come with, or the case anyway, it does come with four long screws and then three short ones. To mount the Pi, we're gonna use the three short ones. So those are going to fit on those corners. The top right, we are not putting a screw in there. That's gonna be the big screw when we put the case together. So these can be kind of difficult to get in there unless you have, you know, a magnetic screwdriver. I did not have one at, you know, in my possession at that moment. So this took me a minute to get the screws in there. And you got to kind of make sure you have the proper size Phillips head screwdriver. But overall, not too difficult getting them in there. Can just take a moment if you don't have any uh like I said, magnetic screwdriver or tweezers or something to get it started can be a little cramped in there, if you know what I'm saying, especially if you have, you know, man-sized hands. If you have baby hands with slender fingers, maybe you can get those screws in there all right. But for me, it was a little bit of a struggle. But I think it might have been worth it. We'll find out. And it is very important to not skip this, to make sure you get those three screws in there. You just have to. So we're going to go fast forward through everything here. 
because everything's pretty simple. These GPIO pins, they line up to this board that is on the Rasp Tendo case. And as you see, everything is clearly marked on the wires and on the board. So just make sure you line them all up and plug them in to where they're supposed to go. Like I said, they're all clearly marked, so that is very easy to do. Not much of an issue there. And then to plug the ones into the GPIO pins on the Pi, just follow the little diagram that's in the manual. Pretty simple stuff. Just double check the markings because on both sides, these connectors do say what they're for. So they'll say power LED, you know, negative and positive, and then the power switch and reset switch. Just make sure you're paying attention to where you're lining them up. And you can split the cables off of this strand if you need a little more slack. They're just, you know, glued together or, you know, the, the plastic is stuck together. So it's, it's no big deal if you separate the wires. As long as you're not stripping them, everything should be fine. So there we go. Got everything plugged in. Now all we need to do is assemble the case. So here all we got to do is put in the four bottom screws. Make sure you get them all the way tight so the case is shut completely. No problem. I did not show it here, but the micro SD card slot, it, it passes the ultimate test. Easy to insert and remove a micro SD card. No problem whatsoever. So as you see, everything is easily accessible. And we do have on our side here a port for the Ethernet cable, which you can remove that guard or you can leave it on. We do have two USBs and an LED light in the front. So pretty nice looks good now once you have them screwed in you can put these rubber feet over the screw holes i'm not going to put them on there at this moment but our next step is going to be installing the script to use the button so let's go ahead and do that okay guys so to set up our rasp tendo case you can go about this a couple different ways to make sure the power on and off button and reset buttons work you can either go to the terminal through your raspberry pi Typically by pressing F4, if you're an emulation station, it'll take you to the, to the terminal. Or if you're on your PC and you're connected to the internet with both your Raspberry Pi and your PC, you can go ahead and use PuTTY to do the same thing. Essentially, this makes it a little bit easier because then you don't have to type out the whole script or the command. You can just copy and paste it. So... What you're going to need to do is get PuTTY. If you do not have PuTTY, you can download it here at PuTTY.org. Link will be in the description. And then we are going to navigate to the Rasp Tendo site, and I'll put a link to this as well. Essentially, this is just going to be the manual that comes with your case. But it does have, at step five, it does have the full command that we're going to type. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight it and copy it. And then from there, I am going to open up PuTTY. And here it's going to ask for our IP. To find your IP, you would just go on your Raspberry Pi setup. You would go to the RetroPie setup screen or configuration screen. Scroll to the bottom and there will be a spot that says show IP. Typically, you can just log in by typing in RetroPie but sometimes you won't be able to connect and you're going to need your IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP of this Pi. And then go ahead and click open. And now it's going to say log in as. And we're going to log in as Pi. And the password is going to be raspberry. Boom. So now we're we're at the terminal of our RetroPie screen. So like I said, we want to get this command and just go ahead and copy and paste it in here and let it do its thing. And it's going to go ahead and install everything. So go ahead and give that a moment. And there we go. It says that it will reboot after a few seconds. So if you're looking at your Raspberry Pi, 
on a monitor, you'll see that the system has rebooted. So from here, we're going to go ahead and jump back onto our Raspberry Pi and test our power button, see if she works. So we can go ahead and close Putty, and we should be good. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we go. Raspitendo plugged in. Kind of hard to show you because it's plugged in, obviously. But what are my impressions? So first off, the power and reset button, everything is working great. I'm very impressed how easy it was to install everything and to get that script on there and just getting everything fully functional the way they promised. Very easy to follow instructions. Matter of minutes to get everything going. So the power button, safe, safe shutdown, no issue with that. The reset button, with the way we did it, with the non, you know, not soldering every, anything, that is the safe reset. So when you hit it, it's essentially just doing a pseudo reboot. So you're not gonna corrupt your micro SD card or anything like that. If you do the solder version, that'll be the hardware reboot where it's essentially just unplugging and plugging in the power. So those are your two options. There's another option. It's a little extra thing that we may look at in the near future. If you guys want to peep that out, let me know. But there is an option to set it up to use the reset button, the exit emulators, to pretty much mimic the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. So if you want to see that, let me know, and we'll film something, a little tutorial on how to get that done. So overall, I'm very impressed with this case. I'm digging it. Some people don't like it. They say it looks ugly. Uh, it's not the best looking case, and it's not the worst looking case in my opinion. So there's that. I think people are disappointed in the sense that it doesn't look exactly like the Super Nintendo. Like maybe, you know, the Collector Craft Tiny Tendo Super Nintendo version. The way those look, especially the mold injected version, looks top notch. But it's a basic case and it, it functions great, but the buttons don't work or anything like that. And you do have the USBs coming out the side. Some people don't care. But that case is definitely a great looking case. This case doesn't look as good, but it's very functional and it delivers what it promises. So it's just another option to give you guys, to show you guys. And that's why I do these videos to let you know, hey, there are options. If you're looking for something with a power reset button that works as it should safely, this is a great case to get. $25 around that through Amazon. I think it's a fair price. The Nest Pie case, around the same price, you know, it kind of went up and down in the past. But, you know, you would have to modify that case to get it to run safely. So, those are your options if you're looking for something in that style. The Nest Pie case, in my opinion, looks better than this case. But, I do dig this case quite a bit, especially delivering what they promised. And being very easy to put together. So there you go. Not much else to say about it. I'm giving it two thumbs up. I really do like this case and I am going to use it. I'll probably try to install a fan in the near future. Maybe show a video on how to do that as well. But hope you guys appreciate the video. Smash that like button if you could. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Boom! Peace out. Bye.